While the amazing story of Member 2's success credits male leadership in terms of negotiating and setting up the community for the future, there is no secret to any that the strong women leadership within the community has provided the much needed balance in ensuring that Member 2 does not forget the importance of language, culture and traditions. In many ways, the women are the backbone of the community. I think the women ha have always been the backbone in our communities. They're the ones that, that strengthen our, our, that give strength to our chiefs and to the, the uh, council. I, I believe they're the ones that, that come up with the ideas. They're the ones that, um, that bond, that have that female bonding. For instance, every time there's been um, either a suicide or um, homicide in our community. It's the women who got together. It's the women who prayed together. It's the women who raised their pipes. It's the women who entered the sweat lodge. It's the women who bring the families together. It's the women who bring ceremony into our community. We'll bring healing of family ceremonies. It, it's the elders and the women who always try to connect the families. Dan Christmas and Chief Terry Paul do not dispute the claim that women and elders are a key to guiding the leadership to go in the right direction, ensuring that all things are done in a respectful, honest, and fair way. I would say more than the guiding light. I like to think of them as the, as the heartbeat of the community. I mean, that's who we are. They, they tell us uh, who we are as a person, as a family, as a home, as a community. I mean, if you don't know who you are, then I think all is lost, at least in my view. That's why the elders play such a critical role. They always remind us who we are. Uh, they're, they're part of the key, you know, in educating our people uh, to uh, not only live in the practical world, but to also uh, ensure that we uh, know about our culture, because that's part of, again, as I was saying, that's part of our values. They, they lead by example, like I said, Viola Christmas and, and Caroline and, and my mom and, and Ruth and, and there's other women here. They, they have, um, it's not like their lives have been a bed of roses. Yes, they've gone through hard times, but they always came out stronger for it. They came, it didn't tear them apart. They didn't, um, what is it they say, adversity either makes or breaks you, but it made these women who they are. And it, it, it just made them so much stronger. And, and I think um, they're able to find those teachings. They, they live those teachings of love and kindness and forgiveness and, and um, respect. Uh, I think in any home, right, uh, the mother and the grandmother are the heart of any home. And for a Mi'kmaq home, uh, that's even more critical. So if the mother and the grandmother are the heart of the home, by default, they're the heart of the community. Well, they're able to uh, give us their side, their views, you know, and their, their side on, of the story on what, what the issue is. But it, it, when it involves, uh, you know, uh, females, like uh, the mothers and the grandmothers and aunts and so on, they, they certainly voice their opinion on it. You know, so it's it's really good for us to, you know, and, and, and that's a check. And that doesn't mean that uh, uh, we're completely void about thinking about uh, uh, what women need, but uh, we, we really don't. The best person to get advice on uh, what women need is women themselves. So uh, we certainly, uh, we certainly ask them, along with the, uh, the elders, uh, the women that are elders, and they, they have a tremendous source of uh, information for us to, uh, to get. And sometimes here in Member 2, uh, when we need that refresh, when we need to hit that reset button, you know, we go back to our elders. Why are we doing this again? Okay, okay. It's for the good of the community. It, it's for looking after others. I would say definitely look to your elders. Look to your culture because all the answers are in our culture. All the answers are with our ancestors and, and, and Creator and Mother Earth. Everything that we need is there. It's all in our culture. And there's a lot of uh, uh, Mi'kmaq women in Member 2 that, uh, that uh, 
continue their education because they believe that uh, you know there's uh, there's hope and there's goals uh, to achieve, and uh, they are certainly involved in uh, in a lot in many aspects of uh, of Member Two and its activities. There's a, a lot of natural leaders there. Good morning, Member Two Elementary. Hi. How Sharon Bernard is truly a leader within the community of Member Two possessing the values and principles within the Mi'kmaq traditions. Well, there's an example of uh, younger people that are leaders. Sharon is uh, the principal of our school. And she worked very hard to get her, to get her degree, so along with uh, Jane. And Jane teaches at, at the school, teaches at the kindergarten, the daycare. She teaches the, the uh, Mi'kmaq language, but she also teaches at the, uh, the university. So, you know, uh, both of those uh, women are uh, very strong leaders. Jane Meter has been one of the inspirations to Sharon as they pursued their degrees together in order to build a school in the community and an immersion program within the preschool. My sister-in-law is Jane Meter. We've um, we got our four degrees together, and we work really well together. We know with each other, we know each other's thoughts and where they need to go and we actually are still in the same department after 20 plus years. We built this building with our own money. Um, it was actually uh, an adult vocational training center and we converted it to P to 6 and it has housed us. We are asking for a, a, a new school. We're getting bigger. The numbers have doubled since I arrived here and uh, I, I got 50% of the kids so I'm hoping 100% in the next few years. It's a, it's a battle. Yeah. It's a battle. We're all, uh, colonization is a, is a big thing. It's, uh, it's going to take time. It's, uh, it's taken a hundred years to get where we're at now. Uh, you know, with uh, the language being taken away and uh, the culture and slowly it's going to take, I'm not going to say it's going to take a hundred years to come back. I just reassure them that when they leave them here that we're going to take care of them as well as they would as their parents. So. It's just by promoting the school and, and ensuring them that we follow the, the curriculum guides that are set out by the Nova Scotia School Board. I let them know from P to 6 all my teachers have uh, BED, they have lots of experience, they have lots of hours, most of my staff have masters in education. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, we have to work harder than off the reserve schools, twice as hard. We have to prove to them that we're better, and we are. And, uh, and I have to reassure them that my doors are open and there's no secrets. There's just, I just, I'm hoping it must be working because the numbers are doubled. It has to be working. It's colonization. I have to work hard on that. I have to, ethnic self-esteem, I have to work on those things. Those are, those are all things that were put upon us and it's going to take a long time for that to change. I, I think the Creator just put me here. That's why I always think I'm here. And, this is the job I got to do, and I feel good doing it. And I don't mind doing it, and, and I, everyone's going to come. That's what's going to happen. That's what I think. Sharon and her husband did not speak the language and felt like strangers in their own home whenever their families gathered. I think when my kids were born and when I was home as a mom with them, that's when it started to happen. I started to see Daryl's family had a strong language. And I saw my mom's family had a strong language. And then, like I say, me and Daryl were the strangers. We didn't have the language. Our parents were discouraged to mm -hmm. talk to us in the language mm -hmm. and just encourage us to send our kids off the reserve. And I, I started to think, and once my kids went through the system, and I thought to myself, I'm going to go back to school and get my BA. I'm going to go get my BED. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can make a change. Cause I didn't want those kids to feel like strangers, so um, I was brought up in a school where the language and the culture wasn't important, and I think that may be one of the reasons why it's my passion, I think, because it didn't, I didn't feel good about who I was, and I don't want any kid to feel that. I want them to feel good at who they are, and if I can make any change in making that happen, that's what I'm going to do. I always think the Creator made that for me. Is, that's the reasons why I was put here, I think. Her passion for preserving language motivated her to go back to school and get the credentials she needed to make a change in the community. 
got on that horse and I just rode. And I just, if anyone got in my way, I'd knock you right out of the way if you were going to bring, try to bring me down with my self-esteem. Because I just kept going. And I had a lot of people that were around me. Like, like I say, my sister-in-law, Jane Meter, went right through with me. And if, she, if I had lows, she would bring me up. If she was down and low, I'd bring her up. So she was excellent, and we still work well together. I'm here in the office as a principal, and I feel now I was... Uh, I can make a difference. I can meet with um, chief and council now as suppose it, I'm in the classroom. Once the door closes, I, I'm not able to do that. And then now that I'm here in the office, I can make recommendations where I, right now I'm um, pushing for a school and, uh, and with that uh, will come more, more bringing in the elders and bringing in the community because the, the language is declining here. The Department of Education here, member two, uh, started the program. It's an immersion two-year-old program. And right now, uh, Pauline and uh, Ruth Christmas is down there spending the day with the two-year-olds. My granddaughter Madison is down there also. Sharon believes in preserving the language as a way to impact the future. They are supported by strong women elders like Ruth Christmas and Pauline Bernard, to name a few. They, they were at times breadwinners. They, they did everything, I think, and yet they were involved in community, mm -hmm. always involved in community, and gave, gave, always gave back to the community. They didn't, I, I never saw them as being at home and, and just, you know, just doing what what a lot of moms do. They were moms to everybody and aunties to everybody and, gra and now they're grandmothers to everybody, you know? Pauline Bernard and Ruth Christmas, lifetime friends, have been to many part of the backbone of the community through hardships and good times. They love their work in the immersion program and love their community. Oh, they're beautiful, those chips. <laughs> they are beautiful. They give you energy. Oh my God! You get a lot are. of laugh out of them. <laughs> yeah. Our school, the Indian Day School. <laughs> it wasn't like this. That's for sure. Mm. It yeah. wasn't nice like this. No. <laughs> it was a one uh, one room school, and it yeah. came from primary to grade six. <laughs> one teacher. She was here for what sixty seven years. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything was old fashioned. Eh? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. We had pot belly stove mm -hmm. in the middle of the room. Yeah. And the long, long uh, desks. Long desks. Okay. Small. <laughs> some of them were small. Yeah, some of them were small. Yeah. Yeah. But now it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. So many changes. Well, we got new schools. We, got new, we have a new Maple school here for, for our children. We Our never had that before. We have no buildings. Which I never thought we'd ever have on the reserve. We have no roads. We've got no okay. roads. Different roads. Yeah. We have a bigger reserve. Yeah. So uh, it is good for them too because now they they're building they're building like gyms and rinks and arenas for the children. And there's a lot of uh, recreation going on for them. Okay. There's so youth center the over there. Line? New youth center. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh you know, there's so many things that are uh, that are new. While they acknowledge and welcome the prosperity that has been brought to their community, they still have concerns about the safety and security and the future of their children. Well, I don't know about Ruth, but I'm always worried about the children. Yeah. You know, when uh, when there's new people coming in, mm -hmm. don't know what'll happen to our children. Yeah. And there's yeah. new roads, there's different new roads coming yeah. into Memberton now. We only have one yeah. road coming in, that was it. You never know. So you have to be on the lookout all the time. For everyone, all the elders and for the young children. So the security is, uh, is all right. Mm -hmm. And the police, we have the police right here, city police. It's good for our children that are growing up and they have good space down there. They are. They are still the clan mothers. Maybe we haven't, we don't have an official clan mother, but I think we know who they are. We identify them. We can see that. Like I know for, for our family, I see my mother as the clan mother. 
I see Ruth as a clan mother in her family. I see Caroline Marshall as a clan mother in her family. I, I can see those, those women, you know, they, those are the clan mothers and they're still here. The future for Member 2 is promising to be brighter than the past and leaders within the community are working on ways to ensure that Member 2 First Nation remains strong and committed to providing for the future generations to come. When we first opened the building, we were really puzzled what to do with this space because we never knew what to do with it. And um, just by accident, we, we met this gentleman, a Mi'kmaq from Ganawagi. He saw the building when it was in, in, in under construction. And he said, you know, what would be perfect here was a giant dream catcher. He wanted the dream catcher to be uh, a part of the community as well. And so he wanted each child that came out of grade six leaving the school to do their own dream catcher. And so over the years, he comes every spring, takes the children out to the woods, they collect their own materials, and then while teaching them to do the dream catcher, he teaches them about dreaming for the future. So each of those dream catchers, every year we put, number them up every year, each of them symbolizes a dream of a child in number two. So sometimes when I sit here, you know, in leadership sometimes you lose what you're all about. And sometimes you sit here and you look and you say, yeah, that's exactly what we're all about. We're supposed to make these dreams come alive. Dreams and visions are really important. Mm -hmm. and, and those are gifts that Creator gave us. And the sacred fire. They're, they're, those are the gifts that we're given to connect back with our ancestors, to connect to Creator, to connect to that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if we use them, we'll, we will connect back. Right. I'd like to see uh, a little bit more self-esteem about who we are as Mi'kmaq, feel good about themselves and feel good that they would get, that they feel good about being who they are as Mi'kmaq and getting the language and, and speaking it and reading and writing it and, and not be afraid of who they are, ashamed of who they are. I hope uh, and pray that uh, our children will still have a lot of opportunities that uh, a lot of their dreams that are hanging up uh, overhead here will, will become real. That uh, if their dream means uh, living and working in Member 2, that comes true. Or if their dream is to live and work somewhere else and make their dreams come true elsewhere, that comes true as well. So uh, I just want to see that opportunities or the horizon here is always endless and there's always opportunities for people to be what they want to be. I've been in here two years now, and I think I made a, a, a little difference. I'm starting to see the difference. I'm starting to feel the kids are confident, you know. I think we're doing pretty good here, remember, too. I think. I think we can balance both worlds. But I think more than anything, uh, I, I, would, I would be very, very heartbroken if we ever lost that value of caring for each other. And I think to me that's the core of who we are as Mi'kmaq people, that we care for each other, that we care for others, and uh, that we always maintain and strengthen that over the years. Sometimes we miss the old wisher where it was nice and quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things have changed, yeah. Yeah, a lot. We did. No. Oh, for the new generation. <laughs> <laughs> for the new generation. <laughs> <laughs> They do have words of wisdom for anyone who is willing to listen. You're the young people. You're the one that has to go out there and start this. You know, we did our share, but we're, we're there. We're here to help you when you get stuck. But it's, you know, you girls are all together all the time, and the young men. So it's up to you people to go ahead and start something. Because if you wait for somebody else to do it, it's not going to be done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah.